let's talk about the seven warning signs that your kidneys are toxic. Now, I want to do a comprehensive video on the kidney, but in a very, very simple way without teaching you all the fluff and the extra things that you don't need to know. So we're just going to focus on the most important things you need to know to prevent a toxic kidney, as well as what to do if you have toxic kidneys. Now, what is the purpose of the kidneys? Well, it mainly filters the blood, but not like an oil filter in your car. It's much more complex. It gets rid of the toxic things and it will help to reabsorb all the good things. So the more you lose this complex filtering function, you start getting rid of nutrients that you need and you hold waste products. They start backing up into the system. And so all of the symptoms, both in the early stage kidney problems, as well as the late stage kidney problems are directly related to this filtering system becoming damaged. Now, some of the top early symptoms would be a metallic taste in your mouth. That means your toxins are backing up into the system. You have itchiness in your body, and you can also have ammonia breath. Now, some of the later signs that your kidneys are toxic would be edema, okay, swelling, where you put your finger into your lower leg and it leaves a dent. And so you're gonna notice swelling in the lower ankles and feet. Now, this also shows up with the kidney because the liver and the kidney work together. But if you have pitting edema in your lower extremities, um, your kidneys are toxic. Now, the other place you're gonna see edema is underneath the eyes, okay? You're gonna see these kind of puffy swollen bags underneath your eyes. That is the kidneys backing up. Another symptom that you may get is called uremic frost. Now, what is uremic frost? Things are backing up in the system, especially uric acid, and it's backing up through the skin, usually on the scalp or the front part of your head. You'll see these little white specks like frost on your skin. That is urea backing up in the system because the body is not able to get rid of it, and it's coming through your skin. Uh, another common sign would be high blood pressure, because think about it, if the filter is damaged, it's going to kind of inhibit blood flow through the kidney, and it's gonna back up as a back pressure. And one of the problems with high blood pressure is that pressure itself will damage the kidneys. Because if you think about having too much pressure through this pipe and hitting this filter, it'd be very similar to having a water filter in your house and you, you put way too much pressure in this, these pipes, it's gonna damage the filtering mechanism. So the kidney being a filter is really made up of these tiny little filters called glomeruli. And each kidney has about a million of them. And they do the work of filtering and kind of recycling certain nutrients. So you're not wasting all the vitamins and minerals and amino acids. All right. Another really common sign that your kidneys are toxic is that you are exhausted. Okay. You're tired. Now the mechanism of what makes you tired is urea, which is kind of a waste product of protein too much of that in the blood, and you're just going to be so tired. Number five, protein in the urine. If you get a urine test and there's large amounts of protein in the urine, suspect that your kidneys are toxic and they're damaged. Now, if there's a small amount of protein, that could mean something else. But if you have a lot of protein coming through this filter, there's holes in the filter. Okay. They're damaged. All right. Number six is very acidic urine. Your body becomes more acid. And this comes from a imbalance with ammonia because ammonia is very, very alkaline. And so it's not able to buffer things that well. And so you have ammonia building up in certain places in the body and not in others, and it throws off your pH. Now, the other reason why you can become acidic is, especially if you're a diabetic, is that you're running out of insulin. So you have these uncontrolled blood sugars and if you don't watch it, you can develop something called ketoacidosis. But I just want to mention that's completely different than nutritional ketosis, where you're changing your diet and you're getting into ketosis. Ketoacidosis occurs when you are a diabetic and you're not taking your medication and you're not regulating your blood sugars well. All right, number seven, low vitamin D. Now, if you watch some of my other videos on the vitamin D, the kidney is very, very important. So is the liver but the kidney helps in the first conversion from the inactive vitamin D to the active vitamin D. So without good kidney function, 
you're not going to be able to change vitamin D into its active form. And so you're going to have a vitamin D deficiency, despite how much vitamin D you take, as well as a calcium deficiency. And that can lead to all sorts of other problems like calcification in your arteries, atherosclerosis, kidney stones, calcium building up in the arteries, calcium building up in your eyes, calcium building up in the nerves as neuritis, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, I wanna actually shift gears to the main causes of kidney damage. Hands down, the number one cause is diabetes. Specifically, when you have high levels of glucose flowing through the body and through the kidney. Glucose to the kidney is like taking steel wool or sandpaper and just rubbing the inside of your kidney. It just destroys the kidney. The kidney is one of four main body tissues that gets destroyed with high glucose. The other tissues is the heart, like the blood vessels. Then you have the nerves and the brain, and then the eyes. So diabetes just hammers the kidney and destroys the kidney. Now, I just wanna bring up one little side note, which I'm gonna do another video on. If you take a look at normal blood sugars, right? Normal blood sugar would be like 80 milligrams per deciliter. Okay, what does this 80 mean? How much sugar is in the blood when it says 80? It's only four grams. That's like one teaspoon of sugar, okay, to make up normal blood sugar. An average person per day consumes well over, usually it's 15 or more teaspoons every single day. And they have that going through their blood system, right? But a lot of times, well, initially, it doesn't show up in your blood test. It doesn't show up as abnormal blood sugar. And this is because your body works really hard at keeping sugar out of the blood. And it does that through a hormone called insulin. So it's constantly just taking the sugar out. And so it's trying to keep your arteries free of this excess sugar because of the damage it creates. But think about this, where is all the sugar going? Your body is putting it in other places. And this is one of the signs of diabetes is where you have sugar in the urine. And so the kidney filter has to work really hard at getting rid of excess sugar. And this excess sugar is like a blowtorch to your kidney. It just, it creates oxidation and it creates a lot of damage. I'm just amazed that the body actually responds and survives as well as it does with the amount of sugar that an average person consumes. All right, so the primary cause of kidney problems is diabetes. And the second cause is high blood pressure, which a lot of times is caused by diabetes because glucose hardens the arteries, increasing the pressure because there's no elasticity. The other two really big causes of high blood pressure is low vitamin D, which could be caused by a kidney problem, and low potassium, which can then cause kidney damage and high blood pressure can also affect diabetes as well. So it's kind of this circuit that just one causes another problem, it causes another problem back and forth. Now, another cause, not very common, but it can cause kidney damage is polycystic kidney disease. Now, this is usually a genetic problem that manifests when you get kidney damage. And so the genes are usually expressed or get triggered when your body becomes toxic, especially the kidney. In later stage kidney disease, uh, people a lot of times will develop these cysts. All right, then another cause of kidney damage would be glomerulonephritis, which is inflammation of those little filters, those glomeruli. So the question is, what causes inflammation of these little filtering units? Well, if you guess diabetes, you are correct. So you pretty much conclude that the majority of kidney problems come from high blood glucose, okay? So what can you do with that information? Well, let's see. Go on a low-carb diet, that might help. All right, before I get to the foods, I want to just mention potassium for a second. If you have end-stage kidney disease, um, you're not supposed to be consuming too much potassium, okay? Um, you're not supposed to be consuming too much phosphorus because both of those minerals are in high levels. And of course, if you have end-stage kidney disease, you know, your doctor is going to advise you on what to take, what not to take. But I want to tell you something. If you don't have end-stage kidney disease, okay, and you want to prevent end-stage kidney disease, potassium is one of the most important minerals to consume enough of because potassium 
can protect the kidney. And I'm going to put some links down below for those of you that want hardcore data. And I'm talking about not just a supplement, I'm talking about consuming high potassium foods. Now, the other two things I want to mention is vitamin D. When you have kidney damage, you're nearly always going to be low in vitamin D. And then because vitamin D is low, you're also going to be low in calcium. The problem is now we don't have this transportation mechanism of calcium and you start building up calcification in your arteries and in your joints and in your kidney as kidney stones. All right, now that you have that, let's talk about the best foods for the kidney in preventing kidney damage. Hands down, the best foods are leafy greens, okay? Asparagus is awesome for the kidney because it also helps detoxify uric acid. We also have kale, which is loaded with all sorts of phytonutrients that are kidney protective. And then celery. Celery has great nutrients to help detoxify the kidneys and keep the kidneys in good health and do it in a very, very gentle way. Celery juice um, taken periodically is a great way to kind of filter out the kidney. And you're going to see if someone has puffy eyes, they tend to clear up very fast when someone consumes a good amount of celery. I think if someone had weakness in the kidney um, and they consumed celery every single day, maybe right at the meal, last meal, or maybe a little bit later, it would not just help the kidney, it would also help them sleep. But celery is really good for edema, both in the ankles and underneath the eyes. Now, as far as protein, fish and seafood is the best, as well as high quality meats. I'm talking about organic, talking about grass fed, but you don't want to do necessarily high protein. You want to do a moderate amount of protein. You don't want to do a low protein, a moderate amount. That would be between three and six ounces, maybe seven ounces per meal. Now it's very, very important to step up the quality of food when you want to prevent kidney problems, because yes, diabetes, high blood glucose destroys the kidney, but also drugs destroy the kidney and medications destroy the kidney. Many different medications have a side effect to the kidney itself because the kidney is always filtering blood and that's where your medications and drugs end up. So if you're constantly exposing the kidney to medications and drugs, it's gonna damage those kidneys. We don't wanna consume food with pesticides and herbicides. We don't wanna have coffee that's not organic because of the amount of pesticides that they spray. And the other point I wanna bring up is many people that have kidney problems are on a low sodium diet. And so they're obviously probably not even consuming any salt, okay? Which then makes your muscles weak, okay? You're gonna feel very weak and you're gonna feel very, very lethargic. There is a very awesome salt that is naturally very low in sodium. So sea salt, which has like 90 minerals, normally has over 95% of it sodium. But there's a type of sea salt called Baja Gold sea salt that is 70% sodium. And it has 90 minerals. It's very high in potassium and very high in magnesium. So it's very, very good not just for the kidney, but good for the entire body. And it's quite delicious on your food. In fact, it'll really bring out the flavors of your food. And I will put a link down below. I'm not associated with this company at all, but it's a very, very good salt to get your um, potassium magnesium without just going really heavy on the sodium. Now, obviously refined foods, junk foods, high sugary foods, high carb foods are all damaging to the kidney but there are so-called healthy foods that are also damaging to the kidney because they have high amounts of oxalates, okay? Oxalates form with calcium to form oxalate stones that can damage the kidney. So the foods that you probably should avoid if you do have kidney problems would be spinach, almonds, kiwi, beet leaves, and of course, things like beans and grains, things like that. The other point I want to bring up um, with how much liquid you should drink. And if you have damage in your kidney, you should drink at least 2.5 liters per day. That will keep your kidneys from concentrating and developing these little stones. All right, last point, and this is very, very important. If you have damage in your kidney, 
there is a very, very good supplement that I would recommend. And I don't sell it. You can do a search on the internet and find it. It's from a product called Standard Process and it's called Rena Food. Just take one of these before bed for about two to three months. I used to recommend it in practice with really good results with kidney damage. All right, now that you have this information, the next most important thing you need to know is what's the complete diet look like? What should I be eating, okay? You need to be on the healthy keto plan and I have several short step-by-step -step videos right here. Check them out.